Hi, my name is Jason Burton. I own a company called Heirloom Precision in Mesa, Arizona, where I build custom 1911 pistols. I want to welcome you to an episode of Recoil DIY. Today we're going to cover fitting a thumb safety to a 1911 pistol. You're going to need a couple of things to help you out with this. First, you're going to need a file. It's my recommendation that you use a file with a relatively fine cut. I'm going to be using a number two today to demonstrate this procedure. And I would recommend something about that. I wouldn't go something as coarse as a double aught because the coarser you go, the more metal you're going to remove with each file stroke. A bench block is probably going to help you as well. It's going to help you secure the part so that you can file more evenly with each pass. Of course, you're going to need your 1911 pistol and your thumb safety. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start by trying to insert our new thumb safety into our pistol. I've gone ahead and removed my existing thumb safety, my plunger tube detent assembly, and my grip safety in order to get better access to the parts I need to be working on. So I'll take my new thumb safety here, put it in the gun, and try to insert it. Remembering that the thumb safety itself is only going to go into the frame in the center position. The thumb safety sets flush neither in the on or off position, or rather you can't insert it in the on or off position. You have to insert it in the center position. So right now I can't press it into the frame, which tells me the lobe on the thumb safety is oversized for the sear. That's what we want. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and file on the face of this lobe in order to relieve it so it can clear the sear in the gun. If you look closely here, you'll see where it's removed a little bit of finish from the top of this lobe. And that gives me kind of an indexing point on how much material I actually need to remove in order to clearance the lobe for the sear. Let's go ahead and take a couple of file passes. So I'm going to keep the file straight up and down and I'm just going to push the file gently, taking a couple of passes off here. So you can see I've created a flat spot here on the lobe. And this spot is actually what is going to interface with the sear and keep the sear from rotating out of position when the safety is in the on position. You'll also note that the face that I'm filing here, I'm trying to keep parallel to the relief cut for the sear. This relief cut is there so that when you press the trigger, the sear can pivot out of the way and let the hammer fall. Let's go ahead and try to put it in. So it starts to go, as you can see, with just a couple of file passes. That's okay. But you'll note that I can't press it into the on position. It means I'm going to have to take it out of the gun and relieve a little bit more material. A couple more file strokes. Again, keeping my file flat. I'm shortening this face, keeping it parallel to this. Once you got the safety to the point where it will go in the gun, and it will allow you to put it in the on position, you might notice that the safety's action is really tight. This is sort of a good sign. What it's telling us now is that the lug on the safety is very tightly fit to the sear. Now here's where you got to be really careful. We need the safety to be able to move freely, but we need to not overcut this lug so that it allows any sear movement at all. So you'll note here, if you can, can see, that this face that I've been removing material from has a line or a marked part in it from where it's contacting the sear. So now I'm going to go really slow, maybe one stroke at a time, taking a little bit of material, taking the safety, reinserting the gun, and testing each time. Once you've got your safety fit so it clearances the sear correctly and it allows full range of motion, we need to go ahead and run our checks, make sure the part's functioning correctly, at least in this bench top environment. So I'm going to ensure that the gun is unloaded, no ammo, no magazines, 
Nothing of that's needed now. I put the gun back in battery and I'm going to take the thumb safety and insert it into the pistol. From its down position, I'm going to bring it into the up or on position. So this is replicating the safety on. And I'm going to try to press the trigger and release the hammer. Nothing should happen. Next, I'm going to turn the safety off. Again, nothing should happen. The hammer should not fall. You should have no movement in the sear whatsoever. With the safety now in the off position, I need to make sure that the hammer will indeed fall when the trigger is pressed. Holding the safety down, I'll press the trigger, and the hammer falls, just as it should. From here, you can go ahead and re reassemble the pistol, go to the range, and do some live fire to ensure that the part is correctly fit. My name is Jason Burton. Thank you for joining us at Recoil DIY.